In November 2019, Iman, a female Sumatran rhinoceros, died in captivity in Malaysia. She was the country's last Sumatran rhino. The hairy two-horned Asian rhino species also once occurred in India, Bhutan, Bangladesh, Myanmar, Laos, Thailand and China. But poaching and habitat loss wiped out the species from these countries, making it critically endangered. Now, scientists estimate that there are fewer than 80 Sumatran rhinos left in the wild. All of them occur in small populations in Indonesia, scattered across four habitats in Sumatra and one in Indonesian Borneo. But small populations can have big challenges. We know that overcrowding is bad. When there are too many individuals of a population in an area, they start competing for limited resources like food, space and water. Without enough resources to go around, individuals can starve or produce fewer babies, slowing the pace at which the population was growing. But when a population becomes too small and sparse, like in the case of the Sumatran rhino, that can endanger a species too, by making it less successful in reproducing or surviving and slowing down its growth. This phenomenon is called the Ali effect, and it can trigger extinction. There are several mechanisms behind Ali effects. If populations are small, finding food or defending yourself can become harder, especially if you're a social species, like an African wild dog or a meerkat. Without enough helpers that can cooperate for hunting, caring for babies, for surveillance, or for defending the group against predators, the populations of these species can struggle to survive. It can also become difficult to find a mate when there are fewer individuals in an area. An endangered female grey wolf in the US named OR54 travelled nearly 8,000 miles over two years looking for a mate. She died in February this year without a partner. Similarly, Sumatran rhinos can have trouble finding mates since they live in very small, isolated populations in fragmented forests. Iman, for instance, was caught from the wild in 2014 for a captive breeding programme. But as it turned out, she had developed uterine cysts and growths, making her infertile, possibly because she'd gone a long time in the wild without mating. Plants can see this effect too. When a plant's population is small and sparsely distributed, the probability that a bee, wind or some other pollinator carries compatible pollen from one individual to another reduces. And it's not just finding a partner that's a challenge. With fewer individuals in a population, there's the problem of loss of genetic diversity too. What this means is that as a population gets smaller, the chances that you'll end up breeding with your relative increases. This inbreeding can bring a whole world of genetic problems. And these problems and an overall lower genetic variability can mean that the population will struggle to adapt to future environmental changes. Given how small Sumatran rhino populations are, their genetic diversity is likely to be low too, researchers say. If that's indeed the case, its chances of long-term survival look grim. Humans can also induce Ali effects in species with small populations. If a species is being hunted for the wildlife trade, its small population size can make it more desirable because it's rare. Consequently, the species will have a larger target on its back. With increase in poaching, the already rare species might then become even rarer. In all, Ali effects can make small populations shrink further. For threatened species, this can mean extinction, unless there's suitable and adequate conservation intervention at the right time.